Hey guys and welcome back to another duck review. You know, after trying every single topping, SMSL and Gustard made ducks, sometimes I'm forgetting that there are other brands that are trying to do things their way without uh, following others as mindless sheep. I came across a new brand that does things quite differently and I'm not about internal components, I'm about really everything that makes uh, duck. So build quality, sound quality, feature set, app control, so really everything. Today I'll be testing what I believe is one of the finest DACs below 1 grand, that is called Eversolo DAC Z8, that goes for 700 euros or 700 US dollars, and it's time to check it out in the usual fashion. <laughs> When it comes to looks and build quality, this thing was of course milled on a CNC machine and it's covered in this uh, beautiful matte black paint. It uses one of the finest metal feet I've seen on DAX of this level. They even have thick rubber pads that will absorb vibrations coming from within its electronics. There's a high quality display, uh, which I believe uses an IPS panel because viewing angles are great. It has even a dedicated app for iOS and Android users, which works as a remote. You can change anything you want from that app, including digital filters, view meters, inputs, outputs, volume control, and many other things. As for controls, on its front panel, you can see a big display. You have a volume control, since it can be used as a DAC plus preamp combo or as a DAC plus headphone amplifier combo. You have a quarter inch headphone jack and of course a power button right here. On its back, you'll find a USB Type-B and Type-C digital inputs, a coaxial, optical, and Bluetooth antenna socket. There's a USB Type-A input as well, but it will be used only for future firmware updates. On the analog side, you have your regular RCA and XLR outputs that can be volume controllable or fixed. As for tech inside it, Eversolo went with the best ESC Saber silicon, with ES9038 Pro DAC chip more exactly, used in 8 channel mode. So basically paralleling for outputs for a slightly better dynamic range, noise rejection and a slightly better channel crosstalk. As I was explaining in plenty of my DAC reviews, uh, this particular silicon can work in either current mode operation or voltage mode operation, but it gives slightly better results in current mode operation. But since DACs are outputting volts instead of amperes, you need to build a strong current to voltage conversion stage or IV conversion stage. And Eversolo went slightly overkill actually with eight OPA op-amps and with plenty of discrete components as diodes. I don't recall, don't remember seeing a, such a powerful output stage before in a DAC of such price. So that makes me already quite excited. There's an MQA decoder on board some of the nicest Bluetooth codecs as LDAC and aptX HD. The latest XMOS receiver is in here. There's a headphone amplifier section as well, which will be tested in a bit. All right, guys, this is pretty much it. Let's hit some eardrums and check how it actually performs. Before telling you exactly how it sounds in both a headphone setup and stereo setup, I just want to remind you that while I deeply respect detailed measurements and those are sometimes quite important, None of them will be telling you exactly how it sounds, and that's why, uh, you know, listening texts are pretty much mandatory. Now, coming back to this unit, I don't remember uh, hearing such a bassy, such a punchy sounding duck in the bass, and such a rolled off unit in the treble. Usually when I'm thinking about ESC Saber DACs, I'm thinking about uh, super linear, super detailed, you know, straight as a line in terms of frequency response, to a point of being clinical sounding maybe, uh, but this one is just so, so different. Sometimes I'm getting that uh, digital glare, a little bit of digitus or treble ringing, even with upper class units like uh, Gustav X18, like Matrix Mini i3 uh, Pro, but there is none of that with this one. And sometimes I'm getting maybe, you know, fun sounding use of Saber Ducks like Awun S8, like uh, Sonko's SGD1, like a bar sound conductor series, but this one is even more fun sounding. And if there is a definition of musical sounding ESS Saber DAX, 
then I believe that Z8 is pretty much the most fun, inducing, uh, very musical sounding DAC in a way. If I'm connecting it to a Traformatic Primavera headphone amplifier and then followed by a Kenton Rogner planar, then there's always a party starting inside my head every time I hit that play button. There's a little bit too much bass energy, but that's because all three units are excelling in the bass region, so basically multiplying that bass energy several times over. But with other headphones like uh, Sennheiser HD 800S and Hive Monsters Vara, that is actually very beneficial because uh, those are slightly lacking sub bass energy by default. People are usually hunting for a clean, detailed and fun sounding or full bodied sounding DAC without killing their wallets for good. And so far I believe that I found just the strongest candidate for all those points. There is as much bass energy, bass punch as you want. There is a presence in the mid range. It's completely grain and brightness free. It's almost unbelievable that an ESS Able DAC is powering a unit like this. When I moved it into a stereo setup, replacing a core day with the Z8, everything that I've experienced via Traformatic Primavera basically moved over to my stereo setup. So Unify by Letus started pounding my chest a little harder and all those bass notes were appearing in the most unusual places. Uh, something that is not happening with my setup actually and uh, it was a little bit too much because uh, Kef Reference 3 started firing bass canon like uh, bass notes and a few glasses around me started dancing to the rhythm of the music. So in my case it was adding a little bit too much bass but if you need a little bit more oomph, if you need a little bit more presence in the bass then I believe that Z8 will be doing that uh, very easily without exchanging your power amplifiers, your integrated amplifiers. There wasn't only more bass and less treble versus Core Dave, but basically versus all other DACs that I'm still using, like a Gold Note DS10 Plus, like SMSL SU10. And when I removed that Chord Ultima 3 preamplifier and let this one play as a DAC and preamplifier combo, I felt that it wasn't as nasty sounding anymore, it was not as hard pounding anymore, it was not controlling the speaker drivers so well anymore, meaning that it's not using an active preamplifier section, but that's understandable knowing uh, its price point. Moving on to detailed retrieval or how much information it can retrieve from the original files, I want to remind you that it still uses that flagship ES 9038 Pro in 8 channel mode, so basically two channels are being paralleled for a slightly better dynamic range and detail retrieval. So while it won't outperform top of the line Delta Sigma DAX like uh, Gustav X26 Pro, like uh, Mythic Audio Element X, it was always clean sounding and I never felt that something is lacking or it tries to hide something for me. I believe that it's pretty much on the same level uh, with something like Gustav X18, like SMSL SU10, uh, with something like Syncer SD6 Pro, and it's even a little better compared to pricier converters like SMSL VNV D2. In my case, Z8 was trying to reveal a lot of information, but without overdoing it, without making it clinical sounding. And more importantly, it was trying to make my music a little bit more musical in a way, so it was elevating those harmonics as if somebody was swapping that ESS Saber Silicon with a ladder of resistors. By far, the most impressive thing to say about the Z8 is how fast and how impactful it sounded. When it comes to transit response at this price point, usually it's one or the other, but Eversolo made sure that this one will pound proper in the bass and it will keep up with a faster tempo. So in about 2-3 years of reviewing DAX is one of those units that will impress you right away in terms of bass delivery and is the first thing that will hit you even without any kind of burning. Long story short, if you need a fun sounding DAC that will elevate a little bit that bass output, that will calm down the top octave, the treble, and that will never press the brakes in terms of transit response, then Z8 receives my highest recommendation. Even linear sounding headphones like uh, Sennheiser HD800S, like Hi Fumon Susvara, those were transformed into different beasts, different animals with electronic tunes, so be it Infected Mushroom, Noisia, The Prodigy, uh, Chemical Brothers, it just kept on going and going, pumping positive vibes and a healthy dose of dopamine. 
When it comes to sound stage, I observe that once you use a very beefy and powerful output stage consisting of several op amps or discrete components, something forever changes the flow and the scale of the music. So what was uh, you know, B-dimensional and flat sounding is somehow more uh, 3D sounding, more holographic sounding with a beefier output stage. And that's what I'm hearing with uh, Z8. Well, this one won't really outperform the bigger sounding DACs that I reviewed around here. It will easily challenge uh, all DACs below one grand. With all due respect to topping, uh, this one was actually a little bigger sounding compared to D90SC. It was bigger sounding than uh, Matrix Mini i3 Pro, than Gustard X18, although it's not as airy and big sounding as X26 Pro or R26 Discrete. Entry level DACs are sometimes limiting the air travel due to a less impressive power supply and output stage, but that wasn't really the case with Z8, which was um, you know, shrinking or decompressing that stage depending on the recording. Now, usually ESS Saber DACs aren't really regarded as holographic or massive sounding, and those will not pose a problem to massive art war leather DACs, but still, I believe this one sounded quite big, even with tiny IMs, even with closed back headphones. Its headphone amplifier section was put there mainly for convenience, but still, after connecting a few headphones, I had a few aha moments uh, with IMs and with desktop headphones. So it has two gain positions and immediately I engage that high gain. I've used the most sensitive IMs that I have at my disposal and Hamlet's last words immediately appeared somewhere around me. The rest is silence. And indeed dead silent it was because I didn't hear really anything playing in the background. It was simply dead silent with all my IMs regardless of the impedance and of you know, sensitivity. And if you have a big collection of IMs and you use desktop components, you can easily use something like this, no problem. Next, I connected a few desktop headphones like Sandy Peacock, like Kenerton Rogner, like Erzetich Phobos, and it was again quite punchy, quite alive, uh, quite bassy sounding. It was never lifeless or thin sounding. Uh, it worked nice with those, so it had enough headroom, but with something like Odyssey LCD4, it was already limiting dynamics, and of course, it will not work with something like Havman Susvara, uh, like Abyss uh, 1266. Nonetheless, I was actually surprised by its super black background and by its power output, uh, driving efficiently a few desktop headphones without too much trouble. Moving on to frequency response, Z8 is what I would call as a bass canon-like DAC because bass lovers will truly appreciate its abilities in showing bass notes even in tunes where those shouldn't be there, like jazz and blues. It adds a few dBs in the lowest octaves, in the mid bass as well, and that makes everything a little more fuller bodied a little bit more denser sounding. And if you use a linear type of amplifier, be it headphone amplifier or integrated amplifier, then this one will be adding a lot more oomph, a lot more presence, a lot more energy in the bass. It will work as a magic pill, basically. Its mid-range section never lacked body or presence, and I know it's a weird sentence when describing the sound of an ESS Saber DAC, but seriously now, guys, this thing never lacked body, or soul, or emotions. On the contrary, it was kind of sweet and kind of rich sounding with everything that has to do with mid-range. I still remember trying those Fire FH9 with this one, and those are not so great in the mid-range department. And Z8 made them considerably richer sounding, completely changed their tonality, adding so much life and solving all the issues that I had with them. Its triple performance is again very unusual because I never found it bright or clinical sounding, although it's clean and detailed in this regard. I think that this is one of the smoothest sounding uh, treble performances that I've heard in a very long time and it does remind me a lot about R2 while other DACs or about all discrete output stages in Delta Sigma DACs. With my treble intensive tracks it was really actually a joy listening to some rock tunes because I could go even louder, I could use even some linear sounding headphone amplifiers or integrated amplifiers and it will still uh, sound uh, quite relaxed in the treble. Moving on to my conclusions, 
We are getting a great component selection. We are getting an outstanding analog and digital implementations. We are getting a great feature set, an advanced UI, and a very interesting app control that usually can be found in much pricier devices. It provided one of the blackest backgrounds that I have experienced with digital audio and one of the most fun sound signatures that I have experienced in months. And for all of the reasons, I believe that a gold award was fully deserved. If I would need to pick a little bit, that would be about its display because I wanted it exactly in the middle, but everything else worked above my expectations. And that's why I'll be recommending this one as a unique sounding dock at 700 euros. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed my review. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And as usual, listen to my tunes, be positive and I'll see you around. Cheers.